The DOD was built as a hardware company in the industrial age. It needed to become a software-centric company in the digital age. Project Maven was about intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. Jake was about everything else in the Department of Defense. And he signed out a memo within about 24 hours, the famous Project Maven memo in, in, in a few months. We were up and running. Uh, Lieutenant General Jack Shanahan I was the inaugural director of the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, the GIC, and in the office of the DOD's Chief Information Officer at the Pentagon, responsible for accelerating the delivery of AI-enabled capabilities to expand the U.S. Joint Force advantages in this domain. I had a distinguished 36-year career. I was the director of the Algorithmic Warfare Cross-Functional Team, otherwise known as uh, Project Maven, where he established and led the department's AI Pathfinder fielding program. When the Cold War ended, the government stopped paying attention to the emerging and disruptive technology industry that was blooming in Silicon Valley, the famous defense primes. We're still very embedded with the Department of Defense, building satellites, aircraft carriers, fighter aircraft, submarines. But something else was happening that was a direct outgrowth of the personal computer revolution. The problem was we were dealing with more information from more sources than at any point before in history and we had run out of humans to be able to deal with that workload. We went to the companies in Silicon Valley that were so far ahead of anybody else. They wanted to work with the government. There were instances, a lot of internal resistance within the, some of these companies like Google. But what were the biggest challenges the DoD faced in bringing these two together? You know, a couple of thousand employees in Google protested pretty vociferously about the project. And at the end of that, the contract ended. It was a canary in the coal mine for us. The East India Company was a trading company to begin with and eventually starts to build out an army. This comes into conflict with the British Crown. How do you see this relationship between these tech firms and governments panning out? These companies have become so incredibly powerful. The only thing that's missing right now is security forces, but they're beginning to have those as well in the form of private security forces or digitally cyber forces. They have become sovereign state-like in power. How much is too much power? Which are some of the firms in China that the work being done by the PLA? And there's no way any social scientist, political scientist, or historian and 20 years from now can look back and say, oh, we were surprised by what China was trying to do. Their industrial policy in AI could not be more crystal clear. The talent level is extraordinary in India. It's an AI explosion ready to happen in India. Go to Bangalore and just see a thriving innovation ecosystem. It's remarkable.